God is looking for a generation of righteous called and sent by God, Pastor Olawale Joshua, to prepare the body of Christ for battle and victory. Mark 10, 17 to 21. Now as he was going out on the road, one came running kneel before him, which we have had this two weeks ago and last week, which I told you that salvation is not for negotiation, it's not what you beg for. And ask him, good teacher, what shall I do? Take note of that word. That is why we I want to lay my, where I want to base my message today. What shall I do? What shall I do? What shall I do? That I may enrich eternal life. So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. You know the commandment, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not be a false witness, do not defraud, do honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said to him, one thing you have lacked, go your way. Sell whatever you have and give it to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. I want us to look into this word. What shall I do? What shall I what? To do what? A lot, a lot of us will know what to do. The man know what he's doing. He just want to exercise his feeling. Okay, Jesus Christ said, this is what you will do, this is what you will do. He said, I've kept it in my youth. Could you know what he's doing? But he loved him and said to him, you have lacked one thing. So when Jesus now knocked the nail on the head, the truth is bitter. The Bible said the man was what? He was sorrow in mind. What shall I do? What shall I do? The first thing that I want us to know that we do is Mark, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30. I may not be able to read all the scriptures when I'm giving it to you, but write it down. Place where you got home, search the scripture very well. First thing to do, if you want to enter into the kingdom of God, if you want to genuinely born again, he said, come to me. Not the people that is troubling alone. If you want to enter into the kingdom of God, you must know the truth and the truth must set you free. So now how can you know the truth? He said, come to me. All oh, you who are labor and are heavy landing, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am a gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. So he's talking of souls. First thing to do, if you want to enter into the kingdom of God, you must come to him. You must know him. What shall I do? In order for me to enter into the kingdom of God, the second thing we must do is to be saved, you must turn away from sin. 
things you must do if you want to inherit the kingdom of God. Genuinely born again, spiritual filled. To be saved, that is the second one, you must be turned, you must turn away from sin. Ezekiel 33, verse 11. Ezekiel 33, verse 11. Let's read it together, please. Says to them, to who? Says to who? Says to who? Which I'm saying to you now. Says to them, as I leave, says the Lord, let's go. I have no pleasure in the death of a wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and leave. Turn, turn from. For why should you die? First thing, that is the second thing you must do if you want to be if you want to enter. Second Chronicles seven fourteen also says, "If my people who are called by my name, there is about five or four things there. Let's go. If my people who are called by my name, number one, we humble themselves. Number two." Number three, number four, turn from their wicked way. That is the second thing if you want to read the kingdom of God. Jesus has said to us, if anyone desire to follow me, you must deny yourself. And turn from their wicked ways, let's go, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Isaiah 1, 16 to 19. Isaiah 1, 16 to 19 says, Wash yourself. Make yourself clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Let's look at Jeremiah 3. You can write that one down. Isaiah 1, 16 to 19. At your convenient time, read it at home. Jeremiah 3, 22. Jeremiah 3, 22. Let's go. Return you by living, children. The second thing you must do if you want to enrich the kingdom of God, you must be born again. And if you are genuinely born again, you must turn to him and back the thing you are doing, which is contrary to the will of God. The word that we are looking today is, what shall I do? And Jesus Christ told the man, Fornicator, blah, blah, four witnesses. He said, I've kept this all my day. My father have told me, and I've run away from it. But Jesus loved him. As Jesus loved me and you, we are still alive today. As we are hearing the message of salvation, we have the grace now. Either we like it or not, either pleasing or displeasing. I want to ask questions to my, my people. Are we not tired of the situation we are. Are you not tired? The situation we are. Are we not tired? We slept. We woke up. The same thing. We repeat the same thing. Day and night. No changes. Just check yourself. Am I in line up with God? If anything happened today, am I in connection with God? The man asks, and Jesus loved him. He loved you. That is why you are here today. He said, what shall I do? So the man knew that there's a place that after death, someone must go to. Brethren, 
my daddy in the Lord, my father in the Lord, my mother in the Lord, my sisters and brother, my daughters and my son in the Lord. God sent me to you. Just bow down your head and close your eyes now. I want to ask a question as you close your eyes. Ask yourself now that if the kingdom come now, where am I going to? Just close your eyes and talk to your inner man. This message of salvation is not the message that I will make you to laugh. Just ask yourself, if the kingdom come now, where am I going to? Check yourself. You know what is in your hand. You know what is in your cupboard. You know what is in your pulse. You know if you belong to Christ. You know if you are going to make it. I was studying the book of Peter today. Peter knew the time is going to die. He said, it is now for me to take off the tent that I am. Which means he was saying, it is time for me now to die. Open your eyes. It's a question. This is the crucial time to say the truth. Nothing but the truth. And I'm asking you and I'm begging you as a church, me that is preaching this message to you, if you see me doing wrong thing, please and please challenge me. What did I say? If you don't do that, you are my enemy. Which means you don't want me to make heaven. If you see me both outside or inside, that I'm doing things that is contrary to what I'm saying. Please, I'm begging you, call me. Flog me with your word. I am accept correction anytime, any day. Why? I don't want to preach for you. You make it, and I don't make it. The woman continued yesterday. He said there was a preacher who preached the message of God to his people. And they took this man to heaven, and it was seen his member that is preached message to that they yielded to the word of God. They are clubbing ladder, they are clubbing stamp. Mommy was there yesterday. And the man now got to the stamp, he cannot climb. The man that stood by the stamp said, You stay aside. And the members of the church are climbing. So one of them said, Ah, Daddy, let's go. You're supposed to climb. Let's go. Daddy climb up. He said, no. The man that is by the stamp says, I should stay aside. So they said, the, the, the member said, Pastor, come. He said, no. This man said, I should stay here. And he can't ask questions. Which means he preached the gospel to the people and they receive it. Him that preached the gospel did not enter. It is not a matter of teaching or preaching. You may be teach. You may preach, you may not enter. You may not preach, you may hear and enter. Don't look at your preacher that they are saints. Don't look at your pastor that they are clean. All what I want you to base your Christianity on is the standard of God, which is the word. If I'm preaching anything that is contrary, please in this house, raise up your hand and ask me a question on the author. If I cannot answer that question correctly the way you want it, tell me that, Pastor, you are wrong, and I will accept. Why? I don't want to mislead you, and I don't want, to, to, I don't want you to make me to fall. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to myself. Both you and me, we are under grace. So I didn't say I'm guaranteed. I didn't say I'm saint. And I didn't say you are not going to make it. Both you and me, the world is talking to us. If it's truly we want to make heaven, if it's truly we know the God that we are serving, let us put a spade. Enough is enough. Running from one place to another. 
not listening to, uh, to, to, to correction, not listening to, 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 to the word of God. When are you going to run to? Where are you going to run to? One day, the day will become dark. Then you will blame yourself. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 322, return your backsliding children, and I will hear your backslidings. Indeed, we do come to you, for you are the Lord our God. Jeremiah 4, 1 to 3. If you will return, O oh, the members of this church, says the Lord, return to me. And if you will put away your abominations out of my sight, then you shall not be moved. Number three, things we must do to be saved. You must believe in the death and the resurrection of Jesus and receive him as your Lord and Savior of your life. John eleven twenty three, twenty six. 26. John eleven twenty three, twenty six. 26. Matthew 27, 50, 53. John 11, 23, 26, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Let's go. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am, I am, I am, I am the restoration. This is the second play that Jesus was introducing himself. The first one in John 4 to the woman that he win and so the, 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 the prostitute. The prostitute says, I know that Messiah, Savior is coming. And Jesus Christ says, it's me that is talking to you. That is the second play that he introduced himself. Telling people that I am. Now here, because it's the restoration. He said, Jesus said to I am the restoration and the life. He who believe in me, though he may die, he shall live. What's a wonderful word is that? Who can understand that? I will explain it to you. Though if he die, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never. You see now, though if he die, he will live. Now, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? To him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Now, Matthew 27, 50, 53. I'm still talking about the restoration. You will see what I'm saying. When he said, even though he die, he will live. How can someone that die live again? But in him, now let's see. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth quickened and the, and the rocks were split. What happened? And the graves were opened and many bodies of saints, if you die, you will live. If you die, you will live. If you die, you will live. These people are dead, but they are living. He said, and many body of the saints, those who believe in him, had fallen asleep, which means if you die, you are sleeping. We are raised. If you die, you will live. I pray we will not die the second dead. Amen. There is first dead and there is second dead. The first dead is you to leave this planet. That the second dead is judgment in hellfire. And coming out of the graves, so it's not died. After its restoration, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Number four, you must consider your life and then 
from everything that is contrary to what God wants for you. Luke 17, we know the story of the prodigal son who came back to himself. Why can't you come back to yourself today? Isaiah 1, 16 to 17. Exodus 3, 5. Ezekiel 33, 11. You must consider your life and then turn away from everything that is contrary to the word God want for your life. Luke 15, 17. Isaiah 1, 16 to 17. Exodus 3, 5. Ezekiel 33, 11. Now, number five, you must turn away from selfishness and towards God. Turning away from evil, meaning repentance. Matthew 3, 7 to 10. Acts 3, verse 19. Matthew 3, 3, Matthew 3 7 to 10. Let's read it together. John was telling the Pharisees and the Sadducees, let's go, let's go one, loud and clear. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Blood of vipers, who warned you? Who warned you? Who warned you to do what? To flee from the Lord to come. Therefore, let's go bear fruit worthy of repentance. And do not think to say to yourself, God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these. It's okay. Read the rest where you got home. Okay, the last one. Let's go. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut. It will not be your portion. You will not be cut off. You will not be cut down. At that day, they will not say to you they don't know you. Upon all your Christianity on earth, upon all your Sunday, Sunday service, upon all your tithe and your offering, upon all your pledges and you redeem it, upon all your Friday prayer meeting, upon all your Wednesday Bible study, upon all your Sunday school, I pray and I prophesy to someone here today, that voice, I did not know you, it will not stand on you. That day, they will not cut you off. You will not be like that pastor that his people are climbing and they said to him, stay aside. That day, you will not stay aside. That day, you will walk in majestically to your father's kingdom. The house that prepared them for you that day, in the name of Jesus, they will not give to anyone. The grace of God will work for you and it will work for me. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Acts 9, Acts 3, 19. You can write it down. Repent therefore and be comforted that your sin may be blotted out so that time of refreshing may come from where? Number 6. You must acknowledge that Jesus Christ died on the cross to forgive your sin. You must receive him as your savior to cleanse you from your sins. Romans 5 verse 9, Matthew 3 7. You can write it down. Knowing that Jesus has paid the price due for you, for your sins, Titus 2, verse 11. Genesis and Galatians 3, 13 to 14. Are you writing it? John 1, verse 12. Romans 8, 14. Now, verse 7, the last one. 7, the last one. You must ask him to be Lord over your life. Acknowledge him openly to others that Jesus is not only Savior, but your Lord. 1 John 2, 23. Give it to me. 1 John 2, 23. 1 John 2, 23. Whoever denied the Son does not have the Father either. 
He who acknowledges the Son has the Father. So when you open your, your heart and receive him, he comes into your life. He comes into your heart. He comes into your heart, your inner person, through the Holy Spirit and begin to live his life in you. It is your privilege and a call to confess what God has done for you. Romans 10, 9. Write Colossians 2, 6 down. says, As you therefore have received Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Romans 10, 9 says, That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Then Colossians 2, 6 says, As you therefore have received Christ, Jesus, the Lord, so do what? Walk him. So do what? Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. As you are being taught, abandoning him, in it with thanks given. God is looking for a generation of fright.